Um, thank you all for coming. It's uh, great to see a, a good number of folk here. Um, I hope those who participated in the Science Day yesterday uh, also had a, uh, had a really good time. Um, may I acknowledge the Ngunnawal people, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting today, and pay respect to elders of the Ngunnawal nation, both past and present. I extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. These information sessions are a really valuable opportunity for us to describe some of the business reforms that we've been going through. It provides an opportunity for us to hear your feedback and I gather from yesterday there was a lot of great discussion and a lot of feedback so that was fantastic, thank you for that and I would appreciate everyone actively engaging in, uh, in the journey and in the business improvement in the APVMA. Um, I can see lots of uh, our clients and stakeholders in the audience so thank you very much. Um, and some of you I've met and others I'm meeting and, and, and others I'm, I'm going forward. Um, some in the room may, may know me. Um, uh, I'm a veterinarian by training. Um, I also farmed and, and still own a farming property in South Australia. I did that for 10 years. Um, I've held senior management positions in government agricultural portfolios and most recently uh, I had four years in Washington as our agricultural minister councillor um, at our embassy there. But I suppose all of that says one way or another, um, I've been involved in agriculture for over 35 years. Um, it's almost my entire working life. Um, I, I, I used to spend a lot of great times in, in Washington with a whole lot of other Aggies and there's a real Aggie tradition in, in Washington and I think we've got a great Aggie tradition here in Australia as well and I'm very fortunate to be, I think, part of that, that Aggie community and there's lots in this room who are also part of that community. Um, it's, it's a great community to be a part of and, and I uh, have one and only true love and, and that is agriculture and how agriculture contributes to Australia's economy and the APVMA plays a very important part in, in that contribution. So I've got the privilege of leading the APVMA at the moment um, and it really is a genuine privilege. Uh, I've got some incredible staff, some incredible scientific knowledge in the organisation, some really hard working people and it's, it's absolute credit uh, to the organisation that it continues to deliver, maybe not as well as what some may like, um, in the current environment and I think that that's a real credit to the staff and I'd like to certainly acknowledge my staff and certainly my senior leadership team who um, I think have made a great contribution. I've been very lucky to inherit such great staff, such great organisation and such great leadership. Um, I've boosted the leadership a little um, and I've created two deputy CEO positions rather than a chief operating officer um, and I think that gives us just a little more grunt um, in, in oversight and what we want to try and do as we move forward. Um, look, since my appointment in June I've spent quite a bit of time analysing the APVMA. Um, I'm, I'm not a great process person and so I sort of analyse these things and my staff are laughing about me not being a great process person. Um, but I try and see the holistic picture of, of where we're going and I, I must admit I sort of thought I knew a bit about the APVMA um, before, I, before I came to it. Um, but in hindsight I think uh, I was genuinely surprised once I started to dig into it just how much quite a small organisation, it's only 200 people. Um, <coughs> And for instance, when I was in the Department of Agriculture, I had a branch of 1,000 people. So it gives you an idea. It, it, is, a, it, it is a tight knit group of 200 very dedicated people. Um, and of course, we're a regulator. Um, and we implement legislation, uh, we assess risks, and we register agriculture and veterinary chemicals. And we all know it does that. But we also monitor compliance. We review chemicals already on the market. We oversee good manufacturing practice and manage adverse experiences and our reporting programs. We collect levies, provide client services, take legal action and communicate our decisions. And we do all of those to keep people, animals and the environment safe. And it's just worth remembering what we do. We do support productive agricultural industries and I think that's one of the really key roles that we, we have in this space. And we do it in a way that doesn't affect trade or adversely affect trade. My mantra with our organisation at the moment is, it's not where we do these things, but it's how we do them that matters. The APVMA is going to Armidale. We'll be there by 2019, doing the same thing then as we're doing today. 
implementing our legislation, protecting the health and safety of people, animals and the environment. And today's a really good opportunity for everyone in the audience to actually hear about how we're improving our business. We'll talk about work funded under the Agricultural Competitive White Paper and the broader business reforms that will improve regulatory services. We've got colleagues here today from the Department of Agriculture and Water Resources um, and they're driving the legislative change um, and the legislative reform in this space. Um, and I think for me that's one of the keys for the organisation is how closely it works with its policy area. And the policy area is within the Department of Agriculture and Water Resources. I remind people in the room we are essentially a service delivery organisation. Um, and so that's part of our, our dual roles working with the department. It's great to see the department of folk here today. So let me lay out our plan. Our corporate plan for 2017-18 outlines a clear path forward for the APVMA. It sets out our operational priorities and it considers internal and external challenges. And it focuses on business continuity. And of course, also improving our performance. So we're focused on three strategies. I know last year we had four, but I like to keep things simple, so we've got three this year. We'll position our business as a world-class regulator based in regional Australia. We'll deliver good and timely decisions that reflect the risks that we're managing and are informed by science. <coughs> we'll reduce administrative burden through better client service. We're actually primed to deliver these things and we've got a separate program office established to manage the relocation and we've got additional funding from government and that's the commitment and it's also got a commitment to our people. Um, and I'm, having been to a number of our stakeholder board meetings and, and regulator meetings, I'm, I'm really getting a sense that I can actually count on the people in this room as our clients and our stakeholders to support us in that journey. And the other thing I want you to do is keep us honest. If we say we're going to do something, hold us to that. One of my mantras with my organisation, and, and it's been my mantra ever since I joined the public service 10 years ago, is learn how to say no. But when you say yes, make sure you deliver. And we're starting to implement that sort of, that sort of culture within the organisation. So you might hear some no's, sorry, I can't do that. But what else can we do? And when we say we're going to do something, I expect you to hold us <coughs> to account to deliver that. But we won't be delivering every single thing you want. And we may not be able to. So what are we doing and where are we headed? We're looking to improve regulatory efficiency and effectiveness. Um, and there's really quite a bit of significant progress in a number of business processes and technology projects in this space. This year we'll deliver business improvements and reforms funded by the Agricultural Competitive's White Paper. We continue to stabilise our IT systems and platforms and we've commissioned an independent review to identify the underlying causes for delays in assessments and registrations of agricultural and veterinary chemical products, permits and active constituents. I'd remind people in the audience when they're thinking about publicly criticising the performance of the APVMA and linking it to moving. The organisation has never met its statutory timeframes. And part of that says to me, there's something not quite right. There's two things that occur in that space. One is the organisation itself. So if you're not meeting your statutory timeframes, what's happening there? And that's what the review is about. So for me, it's sitting there going, we've never really done this, and yet we've invested time and we've invested money and we've invested resources in trying to improve our performance. And we've had ups and downs, but the word I use in our performance statistics is they're quite volatile. What I want to see is getting a clear understanding of what are the underlying principles that affect that performance. And then we can start to look at it. I don't think it's ever been looked at holistically. And that's really important for me to get our handle on that. And I've got Amy, um, Amy Fox, who's uh, going to be leading that particular lot of work. And I think that that's a really important part for us as we go forward. So operational performance. And I know people are watching us very closely. Um, 
and there's also uh, appears to be significant media interest. Um, it seems like uh, we've only got to scratch ourselves and it's of, of some interest to the media. Um, and I, I can understand that. I sort of knew what I was getting into when I, when I took on this, in, on this role. And our numbers aren't great in the performance space. And I'm quite upfront about that. They're not. Some people have focused on the single numbers, like pesticide statistics. And yes, the number of assessments we've completed on time in pesticides has dropped. On the other hand, the time frame performance for vet medicines has increased. That's what I mean. We're sitting in this quite volatile area where we get one up, one down, and those sorts of things. Um, and last year, we finalised all our work, 68% within time frame. It's last year. This year, we got 69. So in that sort of world, you're sitting there going, well, we're not actually doing what we should be doing, because they're not, neither of those numbers are high enough. But we should be thinking about what are the root causes that actually under, uh, affect that performance. And I think we need to move past the numbers. And that's easy for me to say, because the numbers are problematic for me. But I think we need to look at the performance of the organisation as a regulator that looks after the safety of animals, people and the environment. And that's what I'd like to think it's doing. So we need to be thinking about some other performance statistics for our organisation that we can focus on. My experience with mandated performance targets is, and I've seen this within the Department of Agriculture and Water Resources when I worked there in charge of passengers and mail, where we had mandated intervention targets. Your entire business processes are directed towards meeting the mandated performance targets rather than managing risk. And we're essentially in a risk management organisation. That's what we do. So we need to be thinking about what are some better performance measures for us that actually lose, move towards risk rather than just looking at a mandated time frame performance statistic. They're useful, but they're very broad measures of the performance of an organisation. So the work that we're doing with predicate partners in identifying the root causes of our performance, I hope, will help inform us to what some better performance measures might be for the organisation that we can actually measure and report on that have meaning for those people out in this room. So I've talked a bit about the Agriculture Competitive's White Paper. We got $7.3 million um, and we've got that for four years. Um, the APVMA is the gatekeeper for that and we're sitting there looking at how we might be using that information and that money to improve our processes. The end game really is better access to safe and effective ag vet chemicals for Australian farmers, veterinarians and the community. So what's the benefits for the APVMA clients? We, we're working towards streamlined regulation, lower regulatory approaches and removing impediments to bringing new and a wider range of products using existing actives to the Australian market. We talk about our agricultural white paper projects through three lenses. The first is those that enable the lower regulatory approaches to registration and thereby reduce the regulatory effect. Those that enhance your experience of the registration process and improve client interactions. And those that create more efficient and better business systems, improving our time frame performance and making regulation more transparent. So there's a number of key achievements to date and we've got quite a discussion about some of these later in the day from some of my staff. So I think what I'll do is just list them there. So we've got the crop groupings project, international assessments, we've got an improved fast track registration process, and we've got contestability assessment services, listed standards, transforming the user experience and more efficient business systems. The one I did want to talk just a little bit about and something that I've been quite focused on with the organisation is providing a better, more transparent, outwardly focused voice. One of the things I noticed about the organisation when I came to it was it's quite inward looking. And that's not unusual in an organisation that's under stress and not unusual in an organisation that's undergoing change. But we need to be thinking about how we're outwardly looking and what our outward voice is to clients, the community and our stakeholders. So we're improving our guidance material. We're tailoring it to the information that hopefully you need to lodge the right application with the right data 
and the right supporting evidence so it can meet the APVMA criteria. We released the first modules that will help applicants wanting to vary a product pack size or the sites of product manufacture. And there are more planned for release this year. By improving our guidance material, we aim to make the registration process smoother and for us more efficient. And it really is focused on the most common application types. If we can start to make those easier for both you and us, that will make a big difference <coughs> to the efficiency of the organisation. So what are the next steps with the white paper money? So this year you can expect to see more tailored guidance material. We can see product manufacturers and third party providers will be able to lodge applications and related materials for manufacturing and quality licensing online. We'll have a single consolidated view of the public database of chemical registrations, or I think is what most people know as PubCris. Further enhancements to our online services technology as well. So that's what we're going to be using the rest of the money for and what you can expect to see this year. And as I said at the start, hold, it to, hold us to it. You know, That's what we've said, so hold us to it. So the APVMA in Armidale. So we're improving our reg systems, our IT infrastructure and our processes in line with our transition work that will support the move to Armidale. And we're focused on these three pillars. Supporting and maintaining our workforce, maintaining and refining our business processes, and building the new workplace in Armidale. So let's just put the transition to Armidale in context. In November 16, the Deputy Prime Minister for Agriculture, the Honourable Barnaby Joyce, announced the APVMA would relocate to Armidale. Um, for those who think it's an open argument, it's not. It's a government decision. I'm a public servant. I implement the government decision of the day. And that's our job to do that as effectively and efficiently as possible. And that's what we're aiming to do. So to implement that policy order, we've de we developed a strategy to transition our business and build a world-class regulator which would operate from regional Australia. The work required to prepare and facilitate this relocation is outlined in the APVMA in our Armidale relocation strategy. And that was published in November last year, so you've had access to looking out and look at that. Our strategy is really over five phases. The planning, preparing, our systems testing, and then our operational commissioning. The fifth phase, for those of you who count, that's only four, will consolidate the existing operations in Canberra. So we've completed our planning phase and are now preparing for relocation. As I said, the APVMA will be operating in Armidale from mid-2019. We've already established a presence in Armidale. Our interim office houses two full-time APVMA staff and we're set to increase that footprint. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, and we've been able to recruit, I think, and we've had some very... Uh, very interesting and, and I think positive uh, recruitment um, activity within the Armidale community, um, leveraging off uh, UNE and, and uh, I've got a couple of UNE graduates here from, from agriculture as well. Um, and it's a great agriculture university. So we're now in a position to support the early relocation of some of our Canberra-based staff um, who are using the opportunity to build our operations in Armidale. I know previously the organisation had talked about staff moving towards the end of 2019. It was my assessment coming into the organisation that was not going to be practicable. We weren't going to be able to continue to do the business as usual, manage the transition to Armidale and then be able to take the business forward if we all tried to move in one big block. It just wasn't going to work. So a staged approach, I believe, is a far better way to go. And we'll still deliver on the same regulatory function. I think this is the thing people need to just keep in mind. It's how we deliver some of those functions that's likely to change. We'll continue to keep you informed of when our businesses change and how we might do that, and we've been doing that regularly, and I've got a great communications team who we're actively engaging in that space. So again, if you want to know, give us a call. If you can't find what you need on the website or what you've heard about a change that might be occurring, give us a call. That's what we're there for. So let's look at our workforce as the first pillar. Essentially, I just bring this down to three things. The first is, is that 
I've finalised policies around retention and relocation. One's intended to support our people to relocate from Cranmer to Armidale, and the second provides incentives for staff to stay with us, maintain business continuity and transfer their knowledge to new staff members. Our knowledge management strategy supports this transfer of corporate reg knowledge and we're already making progress through the establishment of the working group that is driving the process to document our business processes and improve our instructional material. Again, coming into the organisation with a workforce that had been quite stable for a long time, a lot of the corporate knowledge sat in people's heads. We weren't as good at writing some of this stuff down in our business processes and our instructional material, and we're working very strongly and very diligently towards mapping that out and being able to put that down for most of the parts of the business that need it. We've been very proactive in recruitment, and I know recruitment has been a recurring issue. It seems that everyone is focused on how many people may or may not have been working in the APVMA, who may or may not have left the APVMA, and of course if they've left, the only reason they've left is because we're relocating. Um, that's a furphy. The other furphy is that you'll never be able to get reg scientists. There's, there's hardly anyone out there and it's really hard to recruit. Can I just tell you, we did a bulk round a few months ago. I had 450 applicants. 240 of those were reg scientists. So the APVMA remains an outstanding place to work for scientists. And it will remain that way in Armidale. We've delivered a nationally accredited course for reg scientists to build capability and create greater consistency in how our staff are working. This is quite an achievement for the organisation. It's a diploma of government in reg science. It's the first of its kind within the Commonwealth. And people in our first intake are really reacting very positively to this course. By hosting the program, the APVMA will be at the forefront of reg science training while also helping to accelerate the learning of our new staff in the regulatory science positions. We're also looking at our human resources capability and our capacity holistically, working with our people to gain a clearer picture of who will be relocating. We're considering market-based services and exploring the options to develop a panel of assessors for some of the lower risk regulatory work that we undertake. We're linking in with government shared services to support some of our corporate activities, all of which for me are about managing risk, being more efficient and reducing the costs in the organisation in that order. One of our pri priority activities is preparing, in preparing for our relocation is to refine our future business operating model. And I know there's been a lot of interest in this. Working with our people and a specialist consulting company, we've defined the elements of our future operating model, which includes a mixture of existing business functions, possibility for shared services and market-based options. But a lot of this and the actual final shape of the business model will depend on our resources. And by that I mean our people. My ideal business model was to move the entire APVMA as it sits now to Armidale and work on business efficiencies. That's not the reality of our position given the number of staff who may want to relocate. So we need to be flexible in the manner in which we implement the business model. How we mix those particular options, and that's the three options associated around existing business functions, shared services and market-based solutions, will vary depending on which function we have staff wanting to move. So that's what I'm meaning by resources. Decisions about how and when to implement the aspects of the operating model are being shared with our people at the moment. And we'll certainly be sharing those with our clients and there's information already on the website. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity and that's to shape the future business model of this organisation. Digital platforms, digital stabilisation and digital working 
will better enable our current business process and are essential to our future operations. And we're working through the arrangements at the moment to enable e-working for our people and are already trialling new technology that supports this flexible working arrangement. And the work that, that Mitch Levy and his team's done around Skype for Business and being able to interact electronically, all of which contributes to this part of it. We're commencing work to digitise our data. I've got over 200,000 files that my staff go and collect or order up and then read and then put on another post and then move away. The organisation has a kilometre of filing just in our place. That's not counting where all the files sit. A kilometre. I thought that was a lot, but anyway, I was maybe not. I was... I've got a little four drawers <laughs> it's filing cabinet for the farm stuff and most of that's not even full either, so certainly the bottom drawer is, but anyway. Costing for our digital strategy has been completed and we're considering these options in line with our broader ICT reform and our stabilisation projects. And I certainly won't steal the thunder from our business improvement presentations you'll see later in the day, but we've had some quick wins. But the key for me in the ICT space, and this is an organisation that has chronically underinvested in ICT over the years, is stabilising our environment, digitising our data, and having the ability for people to e-work. They're the three key strategies for me as we're going forward in the ICT environment. They're the must-haves. There's some other stuff that I think we'll roll out over the next few years, which is the like to have. And some of that's around the experience you may have with the organisation. So within our workplace, we've, as I said earlier, we've established a presence in Armadale. We have an interim office. That interim office can basically house about 15 to 16 people. Um, I've just signed off um, to do a little bit of work in that space um, and we're looking to maybe expand the capacity of that interim office to be able to take a few more people. In recognition of the expression of interest I've put out for staff moving up to Armadale early and also the fact that I think we'll be recruiting in the latest recruitment round directly into that office, particularly for those people who have applied already from Armadale. Look, there's really much to do and we've already made a lot of inroads into this whole area. We're on track with our procurement for permanent offices. The first stage of our scoping of our property requirements has been delivered and the analysis of our current environment, how we use it and what we'll need to do in the future. And that's how I found out we had a kilometre of, of storage space. The expression of interest process advertised on Austender earlier this year is closed and our relocation operations team is assessing and busily shortlifting those particular applicants in the OI. The tender outlined opportunities for co-location of government agencies and given the release of the Department of Human Services expires shortly, there may actually be quite obvious synergies to explore. So the year ahead. Our relocation, as I said, provides us with an opportunity to reshape the business and we're embracing that opportunity. There's a lot to be done and actually I'm quite excited about delivering for our people, our clients and our government and I know that my staff are quite excited as well. We'll continue to engage with you as we improve our regulatory performance and continue the journey to Armadale. And there are a number of ways that you can find out more about our relocation. I invite you to subscribe, subscribe to our newsletter, The Regulatory Update. Follow us on Twitter. I still don't have a Twitter account. I'm of that generation, but anyway. Um, as well as we check out our, regulation, our relocation information which is available online at apvma.gov.au. Progressing government reform. For an agency of, uh, one of the other things I really know is coming in is that for an agency of this size, there's a heck of a lot of reform that's taking place at the moment. Our corporate out plan outlines our commitment to responding to the recommendations of the recent ANAO report. I've already mentioned the agriculture competitive white paper work that we're doing and our work on relocation. There's also ongoing work between the APVMA and the Department of Agriculture and Water Resources on upcoming, up, upcoming legislative amendments. And these legislative amendments aim to help us streamline and improve our operational efficiency. Just a quick bit on ledge. Um, the range of activities, I think, probably 
again, one of the things I noticed coming in the organisation, there was a big further push for legislative reform. Um, and to be honest, I've pushed back quite hard against some of that, because I think there's a whole lot of stuff we can do through policy changes and administrative changes within the organisation without the need for further legislative or regulatory change. The work we've just done in, in finalising and responding um, in regards to the confidential commercial information issue, and we put a practice statement on the website. We've also extend, looking to extend the use of international assessments. And that's the second piece of work, and I must thank Jason and Al, and also um, a number of people within the room who've put a heck of a lot of work into expanding and looking at how we might further use international assessments and approvals in our own approval process. The next cab off the rank in this space for me is actually looking at what we might be able to do in provisional registration. Now, I don't have my head around that at the moment, um, but it's the next cab off the rank, if you like. We've finished CCI. We should hopefully finish international assessments and have an agreed approach with, with stakeholders in the room and industry within the next few weeks, maybe. We'll see how we go. Al, um, Jason's smiling benevolently at me, which is good. Um, and then we'll look to do some work on provisional registration. So this is an exciting time for the APVMA. It's also, I hope, an exciting time for you to be working with us. We've got a great opportunity here to build a regulator that we want, an efficient and an effective one, one that's world class, operating from regional Australia and works in new and exciting ways with clients and partners. Our relocation process provides an opportunity for us to reshape this business and we're embracing that opportunity. There's a lot to be done. As I said, we're quite excited about the opportunities that present themselves. We'll continue to engage with you and we'll continue to engage on our regulatory performance and we'll look to continue to improve our regulatory performance. A number of ways, as I said, you can find out about our work, the reforms and the relocation, and we talked about them before. I'm happy to take any questions and make...